Hello and welcome to the MBS show, episode number 367. I am your host, Norman Sanzo. And today, we have a lot of news to cover. Like, we got four of them, so that's really exciting. But before we start, I would like to say thank you to you guys for being there with me. It's been about 367 episodes. And you all been with me from the very start, so... Thank you so much. That's not even including the review and discussion podcast. And well, let's just say that we have done a lot of contact here and there. Sorry, not contacts, content. Yes. But anywho, um, thank you so much. I I, I just want to get that out there. <coughs> so anywho, let's hop into the first news. So uh, internally, Rary Jack was totally a thing. For the Equestria Girls team. So, if you've seen Equestria Girls, right? <coughs> you you felt the relationship between Applejack and Rarity seems to be, you know, um, <coughs> they're close. That's all I can say. I, I think the first signs of that was that, um, what was that one called? That one where they were... Uh, at the theme park and whatever it was. Yeah, so from that episode or that special, you can clearly tell that, hey, this seems like they're really close. And well, um, the director for <coughs> the special kind of, well, um, talked about it here. And she says that, we thought their conflict felt like a lover's quarrel rather than a friend fight as written, so we played it that way but wrote the line so the viewers could interpret it as either type of relationship. But internally, yeah, we were sh- very shipping. Sorry, uh, we were very jack shipping. So that's pretty cool. And I forgot to click this link to see where this really goes. <coughs> So, yeah, oh wow, oh, there's a lot here. Ah, yes, I remember this. Uh, Hadley, the director for most of the Questra Girls, uh, she mentioned that she wrote, want to wrote, uh, sorry, she mentioned that she wanted to write down her thoughts on the whole um, experience of working on Equestria Girls. And here it is, and I forgot to check this one out. So, if you guys at home are interested in, well, knowing what's happening, um, here it is. Why don't you check it out in the show notes, the links in the show notes and whatnot, and read it yourself. I I will be reading this later on. But so yeah, uh, it seems like a lot of fans really, really, uh, sorry, not fans. I, like the show creators really enjoy working on this. And Webcakes, uh, Webcakes VA, she tweeted, "If you can answer, if you can, if you can answer, we all want to know. Do you ship it?" <laughs> <laughs> and I, I think she's referring to uh, Sai Twai and Sunset. Uh, and yeah, her answer is kinda. I like all the ships really. And I have some <laughs> trashy crack ships on the board crew. <laughs> go, go, wow. Mm, yeah, I, I mean, everybody has one of those crack ships, right? Yeah. I'm not sure what mine is. But anywho, um, someone asked, what about Rary Jack? Uh, was the shipping in... Oh yeah, Roller Coaster of Friendship Intentional, yes. Uh, is there a possibility that they're in love? I never cared for that ship very much before then. <laughs> so yeah. And yeah, like, <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. Uh, much of soreness, much of soreness. So anywho, anywho, um, that's a bit of exciting news. Go check it out. Go go read it yourself, man. Like it's a lot of fun. Anyway, let's move on to the next news. And in the next news, uh, new tales of Equestria, Ogres and Obliets, uh, game listed. <coughs> so, um, Ogres and Obliets is a made up D and D analogy for My Little Pony. Um, Spike, Discord, and Big Mac plays the game, and it seems that our friends at um, who was 
uh, there again? Uh, River Horse, if I remember right. Was it River Horse? Yes, River Horse. Uh, our friends at River Horse Games, they created a, well, real world version of the game. Uh, in this one, it has uh, August and Juliet's uh, expansion to Tales of Equestria, so that's awesome. Uh, uh, I'll just read the blog. August and Juliet is an expansion to Tales of Equestria, enhancing your experience with uh, decal standees to help you tell your stories. Okay. Uh, 139 standees, tokens of ponies, friendly faces, monsters, and villains, a section of small and large plastic bases for the standee tokens, uh, blah, 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 and so on. Um, essentially what this is, is a, well, um, start the set to get you started because it's, well, it's all good and good ads, uh, based on the story, I'm not 100% sure, uh, but you can create your own stories, um, like how, the thing is, I, I really don't know what, how, how they can go on because it seems here that it could be a subsection of the game. I don't know. It could be an expansion. Depends on what they're really moving for. And yeah, there's no not much info given here. All I know is that it's a board game. It's kind of a kit. And you play with it, I guess. So yeah. Uh, in all honesty, I haven't been keeping up with uh, Tales of Equestria because I got no idea how to play. Like, I love the idea of D&D Pathfinder I want to play it but I got no idea how to play it I've played once or twice before but I'm not really good at it so I got no idea but if you guys are playing or are interested in playing this do check it out it is a fun game it is a really fun game and, <coughs> and moving on um, if you want to play D and D, you have to have figures, and what better way to get those figures from WizKids? So a while back, we reported that WizKids have made, our oh, sorry, um, we reported that they were going to make um, miniature figures on this, like um, uh, painted figures and whatnot. So it seems that we are getting more info now. Um, each of these figures are going to cost you about $5 and it's going to be out in October. Um, for now, they're going to have the main six. I wonder if there's um, Princess Twilight or just normal Unicorn Twilight. Ah, it's Princess Twilight. So that's cool. <coughs> so this here is just a 3D render. And yeah, I, I can see this. So um, what I'm reading here, and let's see. I mean, 6th of October, each sculpture and pre-painted for painting. Uh, not much here to do. So let me see. I, if I remember, I read something here. Okay, um, in October, we skip, we release uh, 6 My Little Pony team deep cut unpainted miniature produced under license from Hasbro like other deep cuts minis the My Little Pony team deep cuts is a line of unpainted plastic miniature that are sold pre-assembled and pre-primed so buyers can begin painting a minimal prep and the mini features deep engraving to help painters locate and paint details the My Little Pony line will, ins will also include decals and stickers that depict cutie marks, which can be attached to the molded, sorry, models to finish the look. So that's pretty interesting. Um, from what I can tell, oh man, I had um. So I, uh, well, I was, <laughs> well, I was going to show you that I had this um. Warhammer free thingy like uh, figure you know I, I do have it here like I really want to show you guys give me a second uh, is it here? oh yeah here we go ah yes 
awesomeness. So, what I have here, and you know what, I'm going to go for a big screen for this one. Yay! So, uh, this. So, this is what they give to newcomers who are interested in trying it out. So, basically, you have the base um, army set, I think, whatever this is. So, they give you the model, the base, and, well... Um, just just the basic essentials um, so oof. so what they want you to do is um, paint it yourself be creative be however you want it to be so you have the figures and whatnot oh wow I am not doing a good job so yeah you can paint it and whatever it is so I'm guessing the pony version of this will be similar so this is not like um, your Bandai Gundams. This is, well, a bit hard though. What they want you to do is prime it, uh, pr pr coat it with, sorry, um, paint it? Yeah, they want you to paint it yourself. So you have to prime it, you have to paint it, and you have to do a lot of prep work just to make this look nice. So ponies here, um, I'm not 100% sure how this is going to look when it's being built, but the base idea is something similar to this. So, if you built um, Gundam models before, <coughs> you're going to have a hard time. Not really hard, but you're going to have a challenge getting into this because uh, Gundams are all snappable. And this one has you using glue to glue each of the parts. Like, for example, um, let's go for the ponies. Because I can predict how it's going to look like. Give me a second. So, um, you could have Rainbow Dash's wing here be separated and her tail be separated. So, does her head and head, probably. And she's obviously not going to be sticking on the base. So, what you want to do is paint all the parts with primer just to make the color pop out and whatnot. And then paint her sky blue or um, cyan whatever you want to call it and then paint the tails in rainbow colors and whatnot and once the, uh, once that is all done uh, you glue each part together and then you well assemble them together to get the figure um, from what they mentioned before there's decals for the kitty marks mm, I'm, I'm guessing that the decals here are going to be um, water base so what that means is you're going to have a piece of um, sticker but it's not going to be a proper sticker like how you paste it on your school books or whatever it is now this is going to be like water base you're going to dab a little bit of water onto the sticker put it on the flank and rub the sticker on it so it transfer it's similar to temporary tattoos if you've done it before so yeah that's the general idea of it and then um, when they say grooves for details i'm guessing that the eye part they're going to have some kind of grooves like um oh uh yeah give me a second <laughs> i've been yeah i feel like a dummy but i hope you understand what i was trying to describe so anyway um the eyes here they're going to have grooves so you can paint it like um, how it was like you can probably paint it by the grooves so you can have her purple eyes and so on so yeah um hope th i can't wait for this to come out so i can see creative people do this because we here have awesome uh creative people who already done things with the blind bags like give me a second <coughs> like for example this thing so this is um, a Hasbro product um, she looks pretty cute and I got no idea what her name is but some people will take this and paint it to be something else um, a good example of this would be Rainbow Dash um, they want to have a Rainbow Dash Team OC so they take the, um, the what you call this, uh, minifigures and paint it to something else maybe they want to make cloud chaser or something like that or um prism blue or something like that. i don't know what they call 
So yeah, um, people will do it, and with this coming out, maybe we'll see a lot of cool team ponies. I, I can't wait to see the fans do stuff, and yeah, this will be great. This will be great, creatively great. So let's move on to the last news, and talking about figures. If you don't want to um, paint your own figures, how about buying the Kotobukiya figures? It's almost 10 times as expensive, but at least you'll get this. Looks nice. So, <coughs> uh, let me read this right. Okay, um, uh, Figure order on Amiyahi started. Uh, appearing at people's houses so that means uh, if you pre-ordered this way back when you'll be getting it right now so that's awesomeness um, if we go to Amiami's website we get to see Kotobukiya's selection here so <coughs> right now it's about 9,970 yen uh, that's equivalent to Malaysian ringgit would be 300 uh, probably 90 plus dollars for you guys I'm not sure if it includes shipping or not, but still, you have this here, the Kotobukiya Bishojo Pinkie Pie, uh, one point seven complete figure release. Okay, so, um, this looks really cool. This looks really nice. I I wish I had the cash for it, but I have to really think about my expenditure because as much as I want to buy this, I can't afford it, man. Like. It's about it's about a lot of money, and you know what? If you guys can afford it, that's awesome. That's awesome on you. Like, I really want it, but <laughs> I don't have the cash. I, I need to save the cash for the show, but <laughs> the show life and so on. <coughs> but um, these are all so. Ooh, that doesn't look. Mmm, the pony figure has something off with it. Oh no! Oh no! Ami, Ami, what are you thinking? Ah no! no sorry, not Ami. Uh, Koto. Oh no! Okay, um... I have to say, Pinkie Pie Equestrugal looks really awesome. No doubt about it. It's just that the pony figure I have a problem with. And you're, you at home may be thinking or wondering, Herman, what's wrong? It looks awesome. True, that may be true. But look at Pinkie Pie's front hoof near the top, like near the joint there. That doesn't look right. That, that looks like you have to assemble yourself where you put the peg and you put it in it looks similar like that and they didn't really put it right you, it, you can clearly tell and it's for both front hooves hmm. um i i, I uh, th there's a um listener that wanted to send me a picture so if you're listening to this now do let me know and tell me if i'm right or wrong in my assumption for this because I'm guessing that I'm just a stickle and they didn't really put it right so once you get yours you probably put it and it doesn't look like that but just, yeah just just let me know because I'm really curious and by looking at this they, they didn't really hmm. yeah okay here's the one to short like uh, hmm. Maybe it's just me because you're spending about almost a hundred dollars on this, and yeah, I, I don't know. I mean, it looks good. It looks good. Uh, just the Pinkie Pie front leg here and under the head thing, like it just bugs me, you know. Uh, but all in all, it looks good. It's worth the money. But if I'm paying this much, I want the best and. In all honesty, the equestrian figure is good. The pony figure is questionable. But still, if you bought it, I am happy for you. I am very jealous of you. 
but other than that, uh, I, I can say much. Mm, here it looks better. Uh, maybe it's just Ami Ami's figure. Maybe somebody else's figure is much better. So anywho, that is the news for this week. And let's head into well, um, next topic. And what have I been doing with my week? So, <coughs> what have I been doing in my week? Um, really nothing special. Uh, I I just do a lot of housework, a bit of work here and there. But I did watch a movie. I finally got the chance to watch John Wick Three, and <coughs> it is really fun. It is a fun movie. Uh, I'm surprised that it's. Uh, in in movie time, it takes about four days out of well, um, four days apart. Like part one is whatever it is, two is few days later, and part three is like all in total is like four days worth. So um, the John Wick series takes a span of a few days, which is kind of interesting. Um. <coughs> there are a lot of awesome scenes in this one. Like you get to see uh, John Wick right right out of the bat. You get to see John Wick do awesome things with a book. And uh, previously it was a pencil. Now it's a book. So yeah, that that is so cool. Um, I have to say that this movie is really really adult theme. Um, I, I won't recommend taking your 12 year old you know what not even 12 I mean uh, I won't even uh, um, recommend taking your youngins to go watch it because it is very questionable but <coughs> it is a fun movie and if you've seen the series you should really go watch it other than that uh, what else Hmm, nothing much. Nothing much in terms of what have I really been doing. Other than um, playing the video games. I, uh, yeah, video games, movies. Mm, oh yeah, I, I've seen Dark Tales Season 2 and I like it. I like the direction. And the last episode for this season, it opens a lot of avenues of where this could be going. And I do love the sprinkles of lore because there's a scene where I forgot who and who were singing the song. F oh yeah, uh, it's Della, Della and the blue one. I forgot his name. They were singing the song Power Slide from uh, the Goofy movie. Uh, yeah, a Goofy movie. That movie song near the end, yeah, they were singing that, so it was really awesome. So it feels like they're doing their own Disney Universe kind of thing where one day you might get a chance to see Goofy and Max, or maybe you get to see Mickey Mouse, and so on. Who, who knows? So it feels that way, it feels like their world is connected in that sense because uh, we got Darkwing Duck and. Uh, Darkwing Duck is kind of uh, in in this one. He's kind of a mm, fictional character, like he is a Adam West Batman kind of thing. So they're trying to reboot and so on. Yeah. Um. So that's part of the universe. So that's cool. So we'll see how it goes. Um. They did acknowledge gummy bears in the past, so that's cool. So yeah, we might get a. Uh, Disney um, Universe DCU <laughs> uh, uh, What is that D-A-U Disney Animated Universe So yeah we, We'll see how it goes Oh maybe it, oh, They did English Tailspin before Yeah With Don Connors He was a He was a riot He was really cool So you know what um, I, I do like The direction Where they're heading it's kind of cool, even though if it's just a shout out and whatnot. So we'll see where it goes. We'll see where it goes. Because who knows? Maybe your favorite um, Disney cartoon will. Chip and Dales. Yeah, we need to see them in somehow. Yep, Rescue Rangers. Yep. 
So yeah, that's the news for this week, and that's what I've been doing. Nothing more than that. I'm kind of slowing. Oh yeah, I forgot to mention one thing. Um, when this episode comes out, it will be on the first of Shawal. If I remember right, let me double check. Because um, for you guys who got no idea, um, right now uh, we're in the uh, month of Ramadan, and that is uh, where the Muslim community uh, are f- fasting for a month. So what that means is they don't eat or drink from sunrise till sunset there's also in between them sorry there's also things in between where they can't do but i'm not going to go indefinite and what this is for is a spiritual enlightenment uh, an understanding where no matter how rich or poor you are everybody's the same where you when you're hungry, sorry, um, when you are n- not able to eat or drink, you feel the same thing, and so on, and so on. Um, like I said, I'm not gonna go in depth into it, but uh, it's not on the Tuesday or Monday if you're listening to this when it comes out. Um, uh, first Shawal will be happening on the Wednesday. So for my Muslim brethren who are watching and listening to this, I wish you a happy Eid al Fitri. And I hope that you guys enjoy the celebration because I know that most of the uh, part of the world, except for Southeast Asia, they don't really celebrate it that heavily like um, some people in Southeast Asia. <coughs> uh, I acknowledge, um, I analyze, I'm sorry, mm, what's the word I'm looking for? The analogy for this is imagine this is uh, the Muslims. Or Southeast Asians Christmas, where they get to have a festive meal with their family and friends, go to houses to celebrate, you know, all those good stuff you do on the holidays and stuff. Yeah, so <coughs> have a have a good one, and I hope that you guys be safe. Uh, fireworks are kind of a thing, and uh, even if I. <laughs> I personally don't agree you play fireworks because A, it's wasteful and B, it's very dangerous. You do not want to miss a finger. That's not good. You need the finger to do something. Oops. <laughs> so anywho, uh, yes, if you like to, sorry, if you have any questions, concerns or suggestions for the show, you can contact us at emissiongmail.com. You can also reach us on the Twitters. The show's Twitter account is at Show, and my personal Twitter account is at Norman Sanzo. And... Please subscribe and read us on iTunes, YouTube. Don't forget to press the bell icon to stay up to date. And Stitcher Radio and also like our Facebook page. You can also catch us on PonyLive.com. Links are in the show notes. Also, do subscribe to the Review and Discussion Podcast on iTunes, Stitcher Radio, and Stitcher Radio. Where we, and we as in myself, Silver Quill, Separate Heart Song, and also Torterra, will review the Pony episodes, comics, and also movies. And sometimes we like to do other things than ponies. Recently, we talk about Avengers. Yeah, that one came out. And then we like to talk about other things than movies. Maybe ladybugs. Yes, we. I, I like to talk about ladybugs because it makes the rest of the guy go nuts. So yay, much awesomeness. So yeah, we do that too. If you'd like to support the show, you can do so at patreon.com slash the MBS show. With your support, you'll get a week's early access to the review and discussion podcast, exclusive and deleted content. And a huge thank you from me. And talking about thank yous, I would like to thank Amy, Lucky Knight, Tristan, Starstream, Jeffrey, and also Master of Light. Thank you so much, guys. You are awesome. And honestly, I couldn't fathom this. Like, I feel honored that you guys are supporting me like you guys really believe in me you guys really want me to do this and yeah i I won't disappoint i'll do my best and just put out a show for you guys because well 
you guys mean the world to me and yeah i i i'm going to do my best to prove that i am worth it yes so anywho i have been norman sanzo and i'll catch you guys next time with another fun episode of the mbs show see ya